Hey Spring Church, this is James Harrell. Welcome to the Spring at Home. We're so excited that you could join us today. We have got a great service plan for you today. We're mixing it up a little bit as we are taking this Sunday off so that we can be with family to celebrate Christmas and the new year. We're gonna have a great time of worship with Debbie, we're gonna have some time to spend doing a special kids segment for you and your family. And then we're gonna engage with Pastor Matt in his sermon. So excited for today. But hey, before we dive into all of that, just a real quick announcement. On January the 2nd, we are having an all church service at 10 a.m. and we're meeting at Desert Hot Springs. So don't show up at Cathedral City at 11 a.m. if you're used to going to that location. We are meeting at 10 a.m. at Desert Hot Springs for an all church service. We're going to be together, celebrate the new year, and listen as Pastor Matt has an incredible message that he wants to share to usher in the new year. Hey, let's get to the good stuff, shall we? Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to The Spring Online. My name is Debbie. I'm the worship leader at The Spring Church, and we are going to get into worship, and I'm super excited to just get into worship with you guys at home, in the comfort of your own home, and um I'm gonna teach you a new song today, so I hope you enjoy it, and we're because we're gonna start singing it like every Sunday. As a rise, strength of God, go before, lift me up. As a wake, eyes of God, look upon.
Hey Spring family, I just thought we'd have a little bit of fun right now if that wasn't obvious already. And I thought I would read uh, for us, for the family, one of these cool Christmas books, Dinosaur Christmas. That's right parents, there's a book called Dinosaur Christmas by Penny Dale, look it up. So today, let's read together, shall we? Stuck Santa Claus Calling, Calling Dinosaur Rescue. Dinosaur Rescue on Christmas Eve. Help! Help! Emergency Dinosaurs Ready. Ready to rescue Santa. To rescue Santa in time for Christmas. Brum! 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 Busy Dinosaur Plowing. Plowing the winding road. The winding road, on and on. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Excited dinosaurs whizzing, whizzing on their snowmobiles, on their snowmobiles through the trees. Swish, swish, swish. Rescue dinosaurs zooming, zooming over the water, over the water on the hovercraft. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Careful dinosaur searching, searching for Santa's house. Santa's house? There! Down the hill! Chugga 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 chugga. Team dinosaur arriving, arriving and starting to dig, starting to dig out Santa's sleigh. Scoop! 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 Dinosaur's tractor towing, towing Santa's sleigh. Santa's sleigh that's stuck in snow. Heave, heave, heave. Helicopter dinosaurs lowering, lowering down the presents. The presents to put in Santa's sleigh. Choppa, choppa, choppa. Jolly Santa Claus flying, flying through the sky, through the sky with his reindeer. Ho, ho, ho! Joyful dinosaurs playing, playing and getting ready, getting ready for Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Hey, thanks for reading that story with me. We love to have fun and celebrate Christmas. 
But on a serious note, it is about the birth of Jesus and the greatest gift that God has given this world ever. And so we have a special message to play for you, for the family, for your kids. And you can check that out by clicking on the link in the description. And it would be a lesson that we would normally do at church. It's with Connect. So I hope you enjoy and have a wonderful day. Hey friends, it's good to be with you today for Spring at Home. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm the lead pastor here if we haven't met yet. And welcome to my living room. Uh, today, I just felt like it was important for us to emphasize what it is to be the church family in our homes. See, one of the things that is really a big passion of mine and one of the things that I want to see grow in our church is this idea that while yes, all together, cumulatively, we are the church in our homes, in our workplaces, in our schools, everywhere we go, we carry the mission of the church with us. That in a sense, your home is like a micro church. That it's your opportunity to gather with your family, open the scriptures, and, and grow together. And so that's what we want to do today. So hopefully you had a great time worshiping together with Debbie, lifting your voices in song. Hopefully the kids got a kick out of Pastor James. Uh, I did not tell him to wear that dinosaur costume. I'm just going on record. He volunteered that because he is amazing, okay? And uh, today I just, I want to share a little bit of scripture with you and then a few thoughts. And particularly what I want to look at is a passage of scripture from 1 Thessalonians. Now, the Thessalonian Christians are kind of unique because they had the Apostle Paul with them for a short time, maybe one to about three months. And then after they had had him with them, they Paul left them. And then within that first year of Paul being gone, the Thessalonians began to experience some of the most intense persecution of any of the churches of the first century. So Paul writes them this letter. And in this letter, he contains a prayer, his hope, his dreams for the Thessalonians. So we're going to read that together in a moment. And then I want to share with you some of my hopes, my prayers for our church in the next year. So let's take a moment and pray. Father, thank you for your word. We know that it's true. And I pray, God, for my friends on the other side of this screen, that during these moments you would speak to us and that the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth would be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. This is First Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 12 through the end of the chapter. It reads like this. And may the Lord make your love for one another and for all people grow and overflow, just as our love for you overflows. May God, as a result, make your hearts strong, blameless, and holy as you stand before God our Father, when our Lord Jesus comes again with all his holy people. Amen. Paul's prayer for the Thessalonians was that as they grew in love for God, they would grow in love for one another, and that by growing in love for God and in growing for, in love for one another, they would grow in Christ. And really, that's the heart of any pastor for their church. And it's my heart for our church, that we would grow in Jesus. You know, the reason that I pastor is not because I want to have a, a, a big ministry or, or anything like that. It's because I genuinely believe that God is doing something in a group of people, in us. And I genuinely believe that if we lean into what God is doing, that we will become more like Jesus. And if we become more like Jesus, then others will see Jesus in us. And as others see Jesus in us, then they will want to come to Jesus also. And this gospel message, this mission of God that's at work in the world will just kind of flow out of us. That's my hope. That's my prayer. So today, if I could, I just want to share with you five things. Five things that I'm praying specifically for our church in the year 2022. And listen, listen, you might have other things that you want to pray for for our church. Please do. And if I could, I, I'd, I'd be selfish. I, I want to say, pray for me because I want to make sure that, that I'm doing my best to lead our church as God is leading us. So here we go. Five things that I'm praying for for our church. The first thing that I'm praying is that we would become a community and not just a gathering. It is my, my sincere and heartfelt prayer that we would move from just being a gathering of people to being a community of people. Now, I believe that there is some real community happening. And, and when I say that, what I mean is like there's genuine relationship and there's genuine care for one another that's happening in our church. But I think it could be so much more. What if when people walk through the doors of our church on a Sunday, the thing that first hit them 
was not, oh, what a nice building. What if the, fir the first thing that hit them was, oh, oh, you know, they have great music here or, oh, I enjoyed that sermon. What if the first thing that hit people when they walked through the doors of our church was, oh my goodness, they love each other. See, the scriptures tell us time and time again, Jesus himself says that the way that the world will know that we belong to him is by the way that we love one another. And that has to be more than like the traditional superficial church thing that we do to say we love each other. You know, bless your heart, brother. Bless you, sister. Like, no, no, no. It's got to go deeper than that. We have to actually care about each other. The only way to deeply love someone is to get involved in their life. What if the people that sit in front of you in church went from being the people that sit in front of you in church to the people that you have lunch with after church? And what if, what if, the, what if the people that, 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 that you know, sit in your row at church were more than just people that sit in your row, but all of a sudden you started to actually see them as brothers and sisters? My prayer for our church is that this year we, we move from just being a gathering of people to a community of people. And there's a big reason for that. Which leads to the second thing that I'm praying for this year. The second thing that I'm praying for this year is that, that while we grow in community, while we grow and care for one another, we would keep our arms open to the newcomer. We keep our arms open to the, the person that comes through our doors that we've never met before, or the person that we have met before, and we just think, oh, what are they doing in my church? My sincere prayer is that as we grow in love for one another, we don't become a closed circle but instead we become an open embrace. That as we grow in community together, we become a place for those that are seeking truth. We become a place for those that are seeking genuine relationship, a place for those that are seeking love and compassion. My prayer is that any person that comes into our church for the first time would have this amazing experience of the love of Jesus that would transform their lives. That when they experience our community, it would be like they're experiencing the presence of God because that's what it truly is to grow in community. You know, the scriptures do teach us that God is love. And I have this theory about that. See, love only works in the context of relationship, right? You, you can't have love without someone to love. And I just have this genuine heartfelt belief that if the spirit of God is in me, and the spirit of God is in you, then the spirit of love is in me, and the spirit of love is in you. And the love that we would share for one another should become so palpable that that's what we would call the presence of God. And that should draw people in. That the spirit of God in me reacting to the spirit of God in you would be this reaction of love that's explosive and, and transformative and, and invites people into something grander. I really believe with all my heart that God has called us to reach our communities, to reach our neighborhoods, to, to reach the cities that we're in, to, to reach those friends that you have across the country through our online platform. And if that's the case, then we can't just grow in community and, and just say it's just about us and what we like. We really love this church the way it is. But instead, we have to have an open embrace that says welcome to all who would come. The third thing that I'm praying for our church this year is that we would allow Jesus to form us through his word and his spirit. My genuine heartfelt prayer for us is that we would allow Jesus to form us through his word and through his spirit. Here's what that means. Sometimes we can be in church for a long time and, and we can have our doctrine figured out and we can have our theology figured out. We can have all the right answers for things, right? Right? except that that doesn't necessarily translate into a deepening relationship with God. And it doesn't necessarily translate into a deepening maturity in Christ. You want to grow in Jesus, then you have to allow his spirit and his word to form you and transform you. It means that, that you have to move beyond just having the right answers to genuinely surrendering to the one and only answer. See, sometimes we get so comfortable with the idea of what it is to be a Christian that we forget that being a Christian is living out this continual lifestyle where we're letting our lives go, being crucified with Christ, dying to ourselves, denying ourselves so that we could become more like him. You want to be like Jesus? You have to allow the Spirit of God and his word to form you. 
You have to allow the scriptures to be the things that, that inform your life more than, than your opinions, more than your politics, more than your ideology, more than anything else. You have to allow the word of God to be the truth that anchors your life. And it's the spirit of God that brings the word of God to life in us and, and begins to reveal to us something new, something fresh. Allow Jesus to form you. That's the next thing I'm praying for each of us. That's what I pray for myself. That's what I'm praying for you. That we would be formed more and more like Jesus. Not just church people, but people becoming more and more like Jesus each day. The fourth thing that I'm praying for this year is that we would each begin to find our role in the Missio Dei. If, you, if you've listened to my, my, my series on Christmas this year, these last four weeks, we've been talking about the Missio Dei. This idea that God has a mission in the world. And I believe with all my heart that you have a role in that. That it's not just for people like me, professional Christians, to do. I mean, that's such a weird paradigm that I live in. I'm like a professional Christian. I tell people what I do for a living and they instantly know or at least have an idea about what my worldview is and, and, and what my basic theology is. But what about you? What's your role in God's mission in the world? What is God specifically calling you to do? Is there something within our church that he's leading you into? Maybe he, he's calling you to help with our kids or our youth, or maybe he's calling you to help start another small group, or maybe you're going to be somebody that helps to, to start a new micro church in your home, and you're going to gather your neighbors together around our online service, and you're going to become the pastor of your street. Listen, every single one of us has a role to play. Maybe God's calling you to pray for this church more. I believe that we're supposed to be a people of prayer. Maybe that's something he's leading you into. What is the role that God is calling you into in the Missio Dei? Because you have a part to play. Every single one of us. None of us get off the hook for being too old, too young, too this or too that. Every single one of us has a part to play. It is a core value of our church that we are all in this together. That how we all are doing is how our church is doing. So what are you doing? What's Jesus calling you to do? Allow his spirit to form that missio day in you. The fifth thing that I'm praying for, and listen, it's the fifth thing, it's not the last thing. But this is the fifth thing on this list, and it's the last thing on this list. But it's not the last thing I'm praying for for our church, but, but it is the, the last thing we're going to talk about today. It's simply this, that we would embrace the old new. Let me explain that. I want us to embrace the old new. I've been saying it for two years now, and I will still say it. I believe God is doing something brand new in our church. And when I say he's doing something brand new in our church, what I believe is that he's doing something our church has never experienced before. But I also believe it's something very old. Because God is only ever really doing one thing in the world. There is one pattern that God works through in the world. Constantly. Over and over and over and over again. Here's the pattern. Death and resurrection. Death and resurrection. Death and resurrection. Sometimes we like to think of it this way. Sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. Jesus himself said it. He said, he said that if a, a, a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and it dies, it abides by itself. But if it dies and rises into new life, then it abides by the will of God. What is this new thing that God is doing in our church? What is this old thing that God is bringing to life in us? See, we, we keep talking about that great passage from Isaiah. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Don't you even know it? Don't you see it? It's this statement that God has always been doing something, but now we can actually see what he's doing. That he's been setting deep roots, that he's been doing something in the world, in us. Here's what I believe. I believe that God is doing something unique in our church. I believe he's doing something unique in every church. But I believe the unique thing he's doing in us is retraining us to be the kind of people that can reach our communities. I think he's igniting a new spark in us to be the kind of people that, that, that bring in those that need to hear the message of Jesus. I believe he is strategically positioning us and equipping us to reach the Coachella Valley. 
not just Desert Hot Springs, not just Cathedral City, but I believe there could be this network of micro churches where people are meeting in homes all across our valley, all gathering around one thing, Christ crucified, Christ risen, Christ in you, Christ in me. I believe that's what he's calling us to. My genuine prayer is that we would embrace that old new. That that we would embrace that old work that God has always been doing, that he's trying to bring new life and redemption into the world, but that new work that he's doing it in us in a fresh way. That he's maybe giving us new tools and new vocabulary and and a new way to do it. My prayer is that we would do it together. Because honestly, that's what has to happen. It can't just be up to me. It can't just be up to James. It can't just be up to Debbie. It has to be all of us. And we could do that. So let's take a moment and pray. I want to pray that God would do something miraculous in each of us today. That his Holy Spirit would speak to us in a unique way. Setting us on a trajectory for this next year. Should Jesus tarry and not come this year, How can we make his name great in our communities? I'm with you. I want Jesus to come back soon. But also, until he does, I want to tell as many people about him as I can. And my hope and prayer is that we would all do that together. Maybe you're watching this and you're going, I don't really get what that pastor's talking about. Um, But there's this thing stirring inside of me right now that's saying, you know what? Um, If God really is at work in the world and Jesus really is the one that rose from the dead the way that that pastor is talking about, then maybe I need to be a part of that. Listen, if you want to give your life to Jesus today, I want you to do that. It's as easy as ABC. A, you need to admit. You need to admit that, that you're a sinner, like we all are. That you're somebody that has been separated from God because of rebellion and pain and anguish, that you are a sinner. And B, you need to believe. You need to believe that Jesus is the way and the only way to overcome your sin. And C, you need to choose. You need to choose to follow Jesus today and every day. To choose to to, to pursue him. So if that's you, I want to lead you in a simple prayer. One sentence where we commit our lives to God. And wherever you're at, I want you to pray it, and I want you to pray it out loud. Pray this with me. Jesus, I give you my life. See, it's a simple prayer. Jesus, I give you my life. If you prayed that for the first time or maybe the first time in a long time, do us a favor. Uh, You can drop into the comments, send us a direct message or text the word follow, F-O-L-L-O-W to the number that's on the screen right now. And when you do, one of our pastors will get in touch with you. We wanna take the next steps with you as we follow Jesus together. But right now, I want to take a moment and pray. I want to pray that that we would all together know what it is to experience the love of God growing in us for one another and for our world. So Holy Spirit, during these moments, would you do something amazing? In each and every one that's watching today, would you begin to stir up something new? Begin to reveal how we can participate with you in what you're doing in the world. Begin to reveal to us the the people in our lives that we need to share you with. God, begin to reveal something to us. Do, do, Do something in us today. Holy Spirit, would you mess us up today and and, and help us recognize that we need to be more and more formed into the image of Christ and not into what we think we're supposed to be, but what you want us to be. Would you make us a people that, that, that stop being just a gathering and start being a community? with arms wide open to our neighborhoods. Thank you, Lord, for my friends that have tuned in today. I pray you bless each and every one. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, happy new year. Thanks for joining us for the spring at home today. And we will see you next Sunday in person, Desert Hot Springs Campus at 10 a.m. for an all-church gathering. Hey!